Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. So welcome, everybody, to this episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Welcome to the green room. This is a call-in show. Um, if you have the app downloaded, you can call in and state your opinion. To the Android users in the house, if you're on my Discord, feel free to go and um, chat in the Discord in the green room section of the Discord. That's where all the Android users are. If you're an iPhone user, you can chat in the chat room here on the green room. So that's what we've done for like all the um, Android people. They just moved over there. So... All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And so I wake up to the news of Shakari Richardson, and basically they're stating that she has not been selected for any event in the Tokyo Olympics. So right now, wooey, there's a shitstorm brewing on Twitter. Folks are in their feelings. People are upset. They're screaming racism. They're very, very mad about this situation. And um, it's really bothered me watching this play out the past few days because I did a live stream on this, I believe last Friday. Right. And I talked about it in that live stream. I had stated that while like my heart hurts for her because she worked a lot. She worked hard to get to where she's at young girl, 21 years old. But like I stated in my live stream, sometimes we have to understand that when we're placed in certain positions, we need to understand that certain things are bigger than ourselves. Sometimes it's not always about us in the moment. Sometimes it's that legacy that we're leaving for future generations, right? So, you know, the rules are the rules. So for me, while I did feel really bad, those were the rules. The rules are, I mean, they're just very strict. This is the Olympics. Yes, it may just be weed if you're the fry cook at Bojangles and they, you know what I'm saying, they decide to drug test you. Then yeah, it's just weed. It's just a little weed. Let them keep frying chicken. As long as he ain't hurt nobody, it don't matter. But this is the Olympics. Where even a few years ago, you couldn't even use insulin. You know, um, I believe even further than that, you couldn't drink coffee. So there's been all types of really stringent rules. And every athlete knows this. Everyone knows this. And so I've kind of watched how this has played out. And it's really bothered me. And so I wrote a post tonight on Instagram. And this is what I wrote. I had to just call out a few people because I felt like a lot of it was very disingenuous. How was the person who's in trouble, how was she more mature than the adults, quote unquote, speaking on her behalf? Because what I respected about Shikari is the fact that she took personal responsibility. She didn't make excuses. You know, she just, she was like, yes, she admitted to it. She smoked weed. She said it was because of her mother's death. She took responsibility for it. And then it just turned into into something just really ugly, And that's the part that kind of was frustrating me is as I'm watching people just make excuses and excuses. And it's like she didn't even have a list of excuses when she did her interview. But yet everybody else does. So this is what I wrote on Instagram. I said, I knew this would happen when people started making excuses and polarizing the situation. You have OBJ. That stands for Odell Beckham Jr., trying to create petitions, you have people screaming racism when Shikari admitted and took ownership of what she did wrong. Once again, this is a global event with hundreds of athletes from all over the world. The fact that people thought the Olympics would bend for one American person is just silly. Had people not made such a big deal of it with threats of boycotting and slander to the Olympics, they probably would have let her run. But because America wanted to polarize this and then turn this into a huge racial issue, as opposed to one person making a mistake, the Olympics ain't trying to be bothered with America's race baiting drama. I don't blame them for falling back from this whole fiasco. There are numerous black women who followed the rules and had clean results and nobody's speaking about them. Shaking my head. Also, Russia states, Also, Russia stays getting banned from the Olympics due to constant doping scandals. You don't see their entire country in an uproar. It's so bad that the Olympians have to now go under the ROC in order to compete. Now, those are the Russian Olympians because Russia has literally been banned constantly. So they have to go under other countries to be able to compete. 
And then I said, she's not the first person to be affected by these rules. Yet you got folks who don't understand how the Olympics work, trying to change it for one person. When this is a global event, she's not the only person at the Olympics. Had they bent it for her, they would have to bend it for thousands of people. And globally, they're just not going to do that. So that's what I had wrote. And, you know, a lot of people agree with it. I think a lot of people are just really tired of the fiasco. Um, and what really bothered me just coming from the celebrity angle is the whole situation with Odell Beckham Jr. Because he was so loud with this, him and Damian Lillard and, you know, LaMelo Ball, you know, a lot of them have been talking about this on Twitter. So Obell said, o Odell Beckham says, this is bullshit, to be honest. Then he says, I'm not watching unless you can run. We can create a petition. Um, we are all waiting on you. Then he says, you should at least run by yourself or something. This ain't right. Now, my issue with that is that when I see that somebody's more upset than the person who's involved in the situation, and I'm sure she's probably kicking herself in the butt. She's probably really upset, but she's handling behind the scenes. When I see that somebody who, who has nothing to do with the this, with this situation, he's not an Olympian. You're an NFL football player. When I see that he's more upset, you know, in the world than she is, I find it attention seeking ish, right? Because let's talk about his sport for a moment. For y'all who don't know, in the NFL, up until recently, they had some of the strictest marijuana rules, okay? And I don't recall Odell Beckham Jr. coming out of his face and going off on the NFL and saying, hey, you need to let my brothers play. It's just weed. This is bullshit. They should just play on the team by themselves. Remember, Randy Gregory, Dallas Cowboys, uh, he failed his seventh drug test and was suspended for like two years. In 2017, uh, who can forget, um, what's his name, Joshua, Josh. He was always getting in trouble for like weed situations in the NFL. And so much so he ended up getting permanently banned from the NFL. If you guys remember Stephen A. Smith and um, all the guys who do commentary were always going in on Josh Gordon because he was so addicted. It's like he couldn't stop smoking weed. I don't recall them ever coming out and saying anything on Josh Gordon's behalf, you know, saying that he should be reinstated. I believe they're trying to work with him now, but even still, he's having issues. Let me go ahead and play out this clip. Um, I hope you guys can hear it. And it's just Stephen A. Smith just ranting about marijuana in um, the NFL. Talking about well, what's the big deal with weed, alcohol, whatever the case may be. In the case of weed, is legal in two states for medicinal purposes. You can use it in 23 and 26 states. Mm -hmm. It's illegal in the NFL. You jeopardize all of that for some weed, and you're getting high in the middle of the afternoon off some weed. Who sit up there and text and tweet and all. Yo, man, what's the problem? What's wrong with smoking a little bit? It's illegal. So you All right. So it's just a funny clip of him just going in on NFL plays who get caught smoking weed. So, like I said, I can't take people from the NBA and NFL seriously when in their own sport, there's rules. So in your sports, it's rules that you guys are supposed to abide by. And when your fellow brothers on the football field get popped, <laughs> y'all call them fake woke Steven, y'all are mess. And when your fellow when your fellow brothers on the football field get popped for smoking weed. You guys are silent. Like I said, I've never heard Odell Beckham Jr. take up for Josh Gordon or any other guy who's gotten in trouble for weed in the NFL. But yet and still, you want to set up petitions for Shikari. And that's why I find it very disingenuous, why I feel like a lot of people jumped on this, mainly for attention, not because they're being sincere. Because at this time, y'all want the Olympics to break the rule for one person. And I think the saddest part of this is that you have many Black women right now who are eligible to run, who did not fill their drug test, and nobody's talking about them. Everything has been focused on Shikari's mistake. And that's what it was. It was just a mistake. And it's taken away from everybody else who did not break the rules. You know, so I just find it very silly that, you know, these people who are professional athletes have so much to say about her sport, but not their own sport that they're attached to. So that, that's why I'm coming from this whole situation. I feel like a lot of it is disingenuous. And I feel like the Olympics have chosen to just kind of back away 
from her because it's just too much at this point. It's too much going on and people are not here for it. They don't want to be tied to all of this. They don't want to be involved with America. You know, we have a lot of racial issues that go on here. And I think because the situation has been made to be a lot bigger than what it technically needed to be, they just decide to distance themselves from her altogether for this particular Olympic. Why I feel like if people would have just left it at, okay, what she said, okay, cool, you know, she took responsibility, we agree with her, and just left it at that and didn't try to spin it into all these pundit talking points. You got folks talking about the rules should change, marijuana should be legal now, they're trying to put pressure on the Olympics. It's just very strange, you know, and it just does not help her case. I think if everybody would have just left it alone, they probably would have made a way for her. Even when I had to call it out in my live stream, people trying to compare what... um. Michael Phelps went through versus her. And I'm like, no, this is two different situations. You guys are conflating apples to oranges. And he got a longer suspension than she did. They technically could have barred her for the next two years. They had been Olympians barred for a year or two for coming up dirty. So they really, she really got the most lenient sentence I've seen in a while. But nobody's looking at it like that. So let me go ahead and, you know, take some calls, honey. Go ahead, raise your hand. Let me see what y'all what y'all talking about here. Um, let me go on and bring um, Malik Robinson. Malik, you're going to be on the stage. Unmute your microphone. Make sure your background is quiet, sir. Hey, Malik. Unmute your microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I did. <laughs> no, you're good. How are you? I'm great. Um, I wanted to speak on the situation, and I felt like. I feel like she still she still still run, but I understand the rules are the rules, mm -hmm. or whatever. But I'm a little nervous. <laughs> uh, what is her name? Shakira. Shakari Richardson. Shakara. Shakari. 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 Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. The rules are the rules, so she shouldn't she shouldn't do it according to the rules, but. I personally feel like even though she smoked weed or whatever, she should, she should still run because I'm sure that she's not the only one. Well, she's proven to be the only one because everybody was tested. She came back with a dirty UA. Oh, she was the only one that, that was proven? Sir, <laughs> like, do you know the case that's going on? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my leg, you just want to come on the show and talk to T. It's okay. <laughs> no, you I'm calling not the saying... girl Shakira. <laughs> well, I, okay, I will say this. I just feel like a lot of black people were upset because they just wanted to see a black woman take over the world in terms of the Olympics, and you know, they wanted representation. But so do you realize that there's other black women? There's women on there from Jamaica. There's several other black women that are also running the Olympics, though, not just her. Well, well, I guess, well, from America's standpoint, that's on mm -hmm. a person. Well, personally, I never heard of her until we recently. can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. It's fine, you're but uh, I haven't heard heard of her until recently so it was kind of like you know new to me mm -hmm. about the situation or what was going on and I've been watching your videos, videos and stuff so I was kind of understanding what you were coming from and I I felt like I don't know I smoke weed so I, I just felt like I can relate <laughs> I was just like you know. so you're a fellow weed smoker so you're not trying to see your fellow weed smoker go down I feel you Right, exactly. But, you know, the rules are the rules. But at the same time, I personally, for me, mm -hmm. I feel like rules are made to be broken. But at the same time, she do have to follow the rules because yeah. of the situation. Well, the chat is asking, are you currently high? <laughs> that they're asking. I'm just late bit. with their asking. <laughs> I had I had a little weed and took a few shots, but yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, and like I said, there's nothing wrong for me personally. I don't have any issue with people who smoke weed. But I think, too, that you have to know the difference between your job and everybody knows to get into the Olympics. It's very, very strict. 
They're very strict. Just like, think about it. How many people will go and apply for a job and they'll tell you, you have to take a drug test. What do people do? They'll start, you know, cleaning out their system and, you know, they'll stop being around weed and stop smoking it because they want to get that job. So it's the same thing. And you know what? You're right. Because I remember like when I first started working at Amazon, it was a girl. Mm -hmm. She was just playing with me. I didn't know that. But she came to me and was like, um, they finna do a drug test. So I'm just like, oh shit, I'm finna go home. Cause, you know, <laughs> I'm not finna deal with it. But, right. it, you know, um, they ain't never do no drug test. And then also, Amazon is not doing a no drug test right now at all when, when, if you're trying to get the job or whatever. Mm hmm. So, but, but, but if they would have told you before you got the job, let's say you want to apply at, you know, FedEx, they do a drug test. Would you not prepare yourself? Yeah, you know, we would, smoke, would. right? And that's all that's all people are saying. Like, you, you, you're going to the Olympics, you know, they test. Why not just take a break for the next, you know, 30 days, 60 days, clean out your system before the testing occurs? You know what? You're right. I, you know, I agree with that. I just felt like. <laughs> Why? Why they did a random drug test? Like, is that? I don't. Well, I don't know. Is it? Oh Lord, Malik! <laughs> yes, that's what they do in the Olympics. <laughs> I, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I'm saying like, mm -hmm. do they do it like every week or every no, time? I don't really know the time frame, but they do them randomly. randomly. I mean, everybody okay. knows that, and they're very strict. Like, you you cannot have certain things in your system at all. They're very very strict. Because they want to be as clean, quote unquote, as clean as possible. Because these are supposed to be the best of the best athletes from all over the world. Okay, okay, I got mm -hmm. you. But I remember you talked about some other girls from. Um, I can't remember what country you said they were from, and you said some about they have more um, testosterone. Yes. Mm -hmm. In their system, and they tried to they tried to do something to tone it down. <laughs> Yeah, that was, we're not going to really go there because that's something totally different from Shikari. But those okay. were, um, those African sisters, they were saying because they had so much testosterone, they wanted them to run in, you know, in a different level than what they trained in. They wanted them to run in a higher level. And it wasn't fair to them because that was something that their body naturally created. Okay, well, I, okay, so, but I just don't get the fact that they, they, they did that because of their situation, but they didn't, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm, <laughs> That's mm -hmm. about what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> like, well, I appreciate you for calling in, love. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. I appreciate you for calling in. Thank you. Uh huh. You have a good night. You too. <laughs> <laughs> Malik was funny. He said, I'm high right now. <laughs> well, hold on. No, Michael. I'm sorry. No, Michael. No, Michael, you're on the stage. Hey, T, it's Nickel. Ni oh, Nick. Oh, okay. It's spelled differently. Okay. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good there. How are you? I'm doing good. Okay. My thing with Shikari, I'm disappointed. Mm -hmm. But in life, you have to learn there's consequences for an, any decision that you make. And she's 21. She has, still has a learning curve. So this is uh, more than likely the way she has to learn that will help develop her. Um, I just wish that there was somebody in her corner to basically tell her or to help her um, with her coping. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, because there's nobody asking, how is she really dealing with this? What is her coping skills? So I'm glad that she took accountability, but everybody's um, standing, oh, she should run. Should she run? But is she healthy within? So right. nobody's thinking about that. Nobody is asking that. And that's basically my main thing. So I know Olympics, oh, she's a black woman. She needs to represent. But the end, but at the end of the day, we, we all, we don't need everything to cater to us blacks. We have to learn certain things as well within the com community. So that's basically all I wanted to say. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for calling in. I appreciate You're you. You're welcome. No, no, no problem there. All right. All right. Let me go ahead and bring on, let's see here, Miss A. Hunt. Miss A. Hunt, you're coming on the stage. Hello? I'm here. Okay, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. So what do you um, think about the Shikari situation? I feel like what the last caller just said, we need to take some accountability and responsibility for us as a community because 
you know, this came with a big responsibility. And I feel like she should have known they was coming for her just because of who she is and how great she is. If you remember, they stayed after Venus and Serena when they first got big, when they mm -hmm. was like 17, 18, they stayed after them. Anything that they could try and hit them with, they did. And if we look at history over the years, they've been fined for stuff that other people never got fined for. You know, yeah. they've been ridiculed in the media just for getting upset over a bad call. If they did mm -hmm. it, they was on front page news. Somebody else did it. It never even made any news. So with what who we are and what we represent, we have to know and stop trying to say, oh, well, she should run. She's not the only one. What's the lady named Shelly Hand, somebody who right before Shelly the Hand. Olympics? Yeah, right before the Olympics started, she got banned for mm -hmm. drugs in her system. And she said it was something she ate. I didn't see no outcry. I didn't see nobody saying it was something she ate. She should still because she never admitted to using drugs. She said it was something she ate that, you know, had her test hot. And that's she was banned and nobody said nothing. But this girl has admitted she's taking responsibility. Let her just, you know, go like the last caller said. This is her mental health. Let this mm -hmm. let her deal with this in peace and stop trying to blow it up and make it a race thing. This is not a race thing. This is a right and wrong thing. That's like, you know, if you work for a federal place, you know, you got to take a drug test. I wish you would go smoke weed and go to a federal job. No, you, right. you're not going to do that because you know what comes along with that job. You know the responsibilities that comes along with that position. Somebody paying you a lot of money and some of these jobs make seventy, eighty thousand $80,000 a year. You're not going to go in there with no weed in your system and no $80,000 job, you know, and they're telling you you're going to be drug tested. So I feel like right. we got to start taking responsibility and stop trying to just, oh, you know, want everybody to give us passes and pacify us for doing wrong. What she did was wrong. And she took right. responsibility for it. Let her go on and get to the next Olympics and be great. She's not the first. She probably won't be the last, but she'll come out swinging at the next Olympics. And I bet you won't be no drugs in her system. But they need exactly. to let it go because she's let it go. Now, as far as I want to make it clear, now when Shelly Ann um, Frazier was banned for failing a drug test, that was in 2010. Mm -mm. So that was about... Was this recent? This one? is this year. Her name is Shelby Hoolihan. Oh, you're talking about Shelby. I thought you were talking about Shel uh, Shelly Ann. Okay, you're talking about Shelby. Because I know there's been a few of them that's been like popped. Because on top of that, we also have um, Brianna McNeil. But that was a whole abortion situation. She also got, you know, she's also ineligible for Tokyo as well. So there's been a few of them. Um, yeah, I'm talking about Shelby. Okay, you're talking about Shelby. Okay, yeah, and that was the thing. Even though, even with Shelly Ann, um, ten years ago, she was and that she was tested positive for oxycodone, and she was suspended for, I believe, what they say, um, six months. So you know, the thirty day was very lenient compared to what some people have gotten. Yeah, but I, I definitely agree with you though that at some point in time, people do have to take personal responsibility and that's the thing that what a lot of people don't understand is that a lot of countries do not really like america like let's just keep that real a lot of mm -hmm. countries look at america as competition look at america as arrogant and then a lot of people a lot of countries overseas they're not the biggest fans of black people anyways so sometimes mm -hmm. you know as black people we have to definitely cross our t's and dot our i's is it fair yeah. no you know what i'm saying but it is what it is so sometimes we have to go into the situation even being better than some of the white Olympians just for the fact that there's going to be more eyes and scrutiny on us. Just exactly. like you were talking about with Serena Williams earlier, you know, the things that they went through. So, yeah, I really appreciate you calling in. You made a lot of good points. All right. Have a good day. Okay. You too, ma'am. All right. Let me go ahead and um, bring on, let's see here, Pamela R. Pamela, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so I just wanted to say that I agree with everything that you said, especially because she took responsibility for what she did, but now everybody's trying to flip it into like a bigger situation mm -hmm. than it really was. And also, um, I don't know if anybody's seen this post, but, like, it's been going viral on Instagram, and it's like, do the Olympics hate black people or something like that? And, like, 
they tried to conflate different issues, like you said, with Michael Phelps. They started talking about uh, Shakari, the... Um, who else? I have the post here. They were talking about Naomi Osaka, Serena Williams, but it's like Serena Williams, she just got injured. So how will she be able to participate in the Olympics? That's not their fault. Naomi Osaka, she quit because of her mental health, but they're trying to make it seem like the Olympics are against black people, which I really don't think it is. And also, I don't understand why people are saying boycott the Olympics when there's other black people there that deserve the support, like Shelly Ann Frazier, Simone Biles, um, any of the other black track stars, black swimmers, and it's not fair to boycott the Olympics just because of one person who knew what they did was wrong and still did it. So, yeah, that's basically like what I wanted to say. Okay, perfect. I appreciate you calling in. And I definitely agree that, you know, we have to support the other black people who are still there. People are acting like nobody else black is going to the Olympics when there's plenty of others. Like you said, Simone Biles, um, Shelly Ann, and we got to support those people as well. They need our support. So thank you for calling in. You're welcome. All right, let me go ahead and bring on, let's see here, uh, Roy Carter. Roy Carter, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, y'all. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. How are you? I'm doing good. So my first, my whole thing with Shikari is, is that Shikari is only 21 years old. And mm-hmm. so, you know, this, this is not going to be her, this, she's going to have multiple chances to get into the Olympics uh, the Olympics and the 2024 Olympics is in three years. So she's probably going to start preparing for that next year. So she'll be fine. But when Miss Odell, let me tell you something about Odell. Oh, not Miss Odell. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell y'all about Odell. I don't know if y'all remember. The but, hot two, but two or three years ago, Odell Beckham was caught in a drug scandal his damn self. Because he was in a hotel Ooh. room with a white lady in the bed, and the white lady was in there smoking a whole mound of coke. It was so much snow on that bed, you would thought it was the Swiss Alps. Ooh. And I don't know if anybody remembers that. That was maybe two or three years ago. Because I'm a sports fan. I'm a sports fanatic. And they were talking about that on all the sports shows. That he was in the bed. It was, it was a picture that leaked. And he was in the bed with this woman. And he was eating pizza, and he and the lady was, you could clearly see that she had all this, all this, during the whole mound of coke. And for a um, day, I just I, Googled it. I see the picture. They got, he's in the bed with the pizza, and there's a bunch of coke right there. Exactly. On the nightstand. So mm. On the nightstand. And so he was almost about to get suspended his damn self for being involved in that. So I don't think that he was ever suspended because I don't think he ever tested, you know, positive for using cocaine. But for you to wrap yourself into this controversy with Shikari, um, you know, it doesn't make any sense because he never cleared the air out with that. He never said, you know, nothing happened with that. You know, we were just hanging around. At least with Shikari, she had, you know, she she held it. She took herself accountable for what she did, mm-hmm. and you know she's moving on with Odell. He was like, "Okay, y'all caught me. Move on next." And it's like, "Okay, bro, whatever." But another thing about the Shikari thing, I don't know if no one uh, caught it, but my my tin had kind of jingled when she was in mm-hmm. the interview. She was saying her biological mother, and so I didn't I understand like, that either. Like, I was like, well, her biological, you know, normally if your mom passes away, you would say, okay, my mom passed away or my mother passed away. Her keep using the word biological just made mm-hmm. me kind of like my ears kind of perked up. Like, hey, so this woman didn't raise you or she didn't like, you know, she didn't raise you and stuff like that. So it's like, right. okay, did you smoke? Why would you like risk your career? for someone mm. that's not that really that close to you. And I'm not trying to, you know, trying to say that, you know, that she, you know, that she shouldn't have did it, stuff like that. Your know, people cope, you know, differently. But my whole thing is like, okay, right. you risk your whole career and you risk, you know, doing this for this woman who you just claim is a quote unquote biological mother. It just didn't seem You know, good. and I thought I agree. I thought that was weird too, because mm-hmm. she's raised with her grandmother. 
Exactly. And remember when she ran up in the stands and hugged exactly. her grandmother? Mm-hmm. I can it's- see that response with the grandmother, but the fact that they keep saying biological, 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 it's almost like they have to remind us that that was her mother because the mother wasn't in her life. Because I've exactly. never heard anybody else's mom be referred to constantly as biological. As a biological, because if my mom passed away and someone says, what happened to your mom? I'm like, well, my mom, you know, my mom passed away. Not my biological mom, like, it, it, it's like okay, you already should know this, my mom. So I just felt it's, like you said. I thought that her mo- grandmother, who she ran up, was the person that raised her. So, mm-hmm. but like I said, I I just feel as though like a lot of people just jumping on this bandwagon just to be woke because everybody want to be woke nowadays. Mm-hmm. And then here comes Stephen Jackson coming out talking about so we need to boycott the Olympics. I'm not boycotting the damn thing. I want to watch Simone Biles. I want to watch the other bio, uh, uh, Simone girl who's the swimmer. It's a lot of black athletes up in through down even not even in america all across the world that are black that have you know that have worked hard to get to the olympics this is not something that's like like this every four years they work their mm-hmm. asses off to get to this moment so why am i look like boycotting and stopping watching the olympics because she you know had a bad you know bad time and she was breathing she smoked weed i'm not going to stop uh, boycotting and not support the other black people and the other per- people, the people of color that, you know, work their asses off to get to this moment. So right. I just feel as though that, you know, she's going to be okay. Paris is in three years. She's mm-hmm. going to get there and everybody else, they're just doing this bandwagon jump because it's good press, and good PR and for clout. Yeah, That's I feel it. that way too. And even with the whole situation, a lot of people are saying too that they would have taken like the death of their biological mom that they obviously may not have been that close to uh-huh. as let me run for her let her see me and be proud of me from heaven exactly. as opposed to smoking you know what I'm saying exactly because this is not her first time at the rodeo like she's been you know just like something like she just started running two weeks ago she's been running all her life like this is something that she should have known that and especially her being a black woman this is a black lesbian woman. She got tattoos. She got long, uh, twenty-six inch wigs. You know they are going to be on her ass. She's not the yeah. first person they uh, banned. Like I remember, it's two documentaries on ESPN Plus. One with Ben Johnson. He got found with steroids. They stripped every metal off his ass. Same thing with Marion Jones. She got caught with illegal substances in her system. They stripped her ass, too. She's not the first person, and she's not going to be the last. But like I said, hopefully, she'll learn from this, and then in Paris in three years, she'll do that thing. Exactly. Now, I think you made some excellent points. Oh, it looks like she just tweeted. She just tweeted on Twitter. Let me read this to y'all. It says, the attention that is on track now was because of very, very few names. So that's where fans support lay. You can't be mad at that. So that's what she just tweeted. I guess, then, girl. Yeah, somebody just said right underneath it, girl, you need to learn how to be humble, child. Okay. Exactly, <laughs> like, girl. Exactly, like, who? I mean, I mean, she, yeah, she's fast, but I mean, like, okay, bring it on down, sis. You uh, bring it on down now. I, I, I get where you're coming from, but you're doing a little bit too much. But like I said... <laughs> She's going to be fine. <laughs> She's going to be fine. Like, I really thought that she'd be like the, the next, like, the ghetto version of Flojo. That's what she, that's what she reminded me of, of Flojo. She was fast. She had the long nails. She was just this beautiful black woman. I said, she reminded me so much of, of Flojo. And so, mm-hmm. like I said, I felt bad for her not winning. But like I said, in three years, she's going to do the damn thing. But thank you so much, T, for letting Definitely. me call. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you for calling in. All right. You take care. Have a good one. You too. He made some really, really good points, you know. But, yeah, she just tweeted that. So some people are agreeing. Some people are dragging her home. You know, Twitter, breaking news. Somebody in the chat said, Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.